Hello, my name is Daryl Pierce. I'm the Area Fisheries Manager for the Upper Delaware Drainage, including the Lehigh and Lackawaxen Rivers. Today, my topic is going to cover migratory fishes. Migratory fishes is a term used to collectively reference a group of fish, including striped bass, American shad, American eel, hickory shad, river herring, sturgeons, and sea lamprey. The commonality among migratory fishes is their connection to marine waters of the Atlantic Ocean during some portion of their life cycle. Anadromous fishes spawn in fresh water and then grow and mature in salt water. This is illustrated in the graphic on the screen for shad and herring where they are returning in the springtime for spawning of which the adults then return to the ocean. Young and juvenile stay within the freshwater estuarine waters, but then make it to the Atlantic Ocean at the end of that first summer, where they'll grow to adulthood after three to six years. Striped bass are also anadromous fishes. Opposite of anadromy is catadromy. Catadromous fishes spawn in the salt water of the Atlantic Ocean, but grow and mature in freshwater of inland waters. An example of this is the American eel. Fishing opportunities within Pennsylvania include striped bass, American shad, American eel, and sea lampreys. Fishing for these species are largely limited to the Delaware River Basin where main stem waters are free flowing. However, numerous barriers such as low head dams and or culverts occur within the basin tributaries inhibiting passage of migratory fishes to their historical ranges. The Nature Conservancy is generating a roadmap of known barriers within the Delaware River Basin as depicted in this graphic. Known barriers are the colored circles and historical ranges are colored orange as reference for American shad. The roadmap will include a prioritization for passage improvements based on a variety of elements such as habitat suitability for migratory fishes above the barrier. Four hydroelectric plants on the Susquehanna River, the Conowingo, Holtwood, Safe Harbor, and York Haven operate fish passage facilities specifically for migratory fishes. Their efficiency, however, is problematic for sustaining fish passage. Migratory fish populations within the Susquehanna River Basin are generally considered under restoration status. Given their broad distribution within the Atlantic Ocean and their connection to inland waters, migratory fishes are collaboratively managed by state, federal, and private stakeholders through a formalized process. These include the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council, Delaware River Fish and Wildlife Management Cooperative and the Susquehanna River Anadromous Fish Restoration Cooperative. The Fish and Boat Commission is a voting member in all of these organizations. Management processes typically originate with a stock assessment of a given species to determine population abundance and potential losses to the population, upon which decisions are determined for ensuring their sustainability. These decisions are encapsulated in various species management plans. As part of the collaborative management for migratory fishes, mandatory registry of anglers was implemented to gain improved understanding of angler use and harvest behaviors upon migratories. Anglers who target or catch shad, striped bass, and river herring from the Delaware River below Trenton Falls or in the Delaware Estuary are required to register. This is free online service with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission at the two web links listed in the center of the slide. Some exemptions do occur. For example, if the angler is under the age of 16, registry is not required. Let's turn our attention to three of our popular migratory fishes. Certainly, striped bass is a large predatory fish returning each spring April through June from the ocean for spawning, principally in the upper Delaware estuary freshwater reaches. They generally are following the shad and river herring, of which these fishes are food source for them. 
The upper estuary waters support spawning and then nursery grounds through the summer months for the fry and juveniles prior to their returning to saltier waters. Adults generally also leave once upon spawning, yet large adults have also been known to frequent non-tidal reaches of the Delaware River as far up as Hancock, New York. Catching these large fish is certainly exciting. During the spring spawning run, focus is typically in the Delaware estuary waters. From about Trenton Falls, Petty Island, or Tinican Island, or from the shore at Bristol Park and the Chamonix State Park, offer excellent opportunities to get at these large fish. During the summertime in the Delaware River main stem, Yardley, Upper Black Eddy, East End, and the confluences of the Bushkill Creek in Pike County or in Mongap in New York also offer opportunities to get at large adults as they remain within the freshwater reaches during the summer. Cut bait such as mullet, bunker, or chicken livers, or live bait such as bloodworms are typical baits used to get uh, striped bass. Be aware these are large fish, so heavier tackle is going to be required. And our state record was recorded back in 1989 as a 53-pound, 13-ounce fish. A stock assessment was recently completed for striped bass by Atlantic State's Marine Fisheries Commission. Findings concluded the striped bass population was declining coastwide and mandated implementation of stricter regulations. The Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission annual monitoring data reflect this conclusion for spawning adults in the Delaware estuary. Further information concerning striped bass management can be attained at the web link on the bottom of this slide. Within Pennsylvania, fishing regulations were adjusted to reflect Atlantic State's Marine Fisheries Commission mandates. In the Delaware estuary waters, below the Calhoun Street Bridge at Morrisville, Pennsylvania, requires the use of non-offsetting circle hooks when using bait, whether or not an angler is specifically targeting striped bass. Additionally, the slot limit was adjusted to reflect the 21 to 24 inch limit allowable for harvest to improve protection on spawning adults. And this slot limit is in effect from April 1st to May 31st. And the other times of the year, the slot is opened to 28 to 35 inches for allowable harvest. Within the Delaware River, the use of non-offsetting circle hooks are recommended, but not required when fishing with bait. And a slot limit of 28 to 35 inches was created for allowable harvest. American shad represent another exciting migratory fish popular with anglers. Returning each spring, March to June, to their native waters for spawning, these fish tend to move as schools upriver. However, a main run characterizes their upriver movement when most shad are homing to a particular river reach. A second in mass migration, termed a lilac run, generally follow a few weeks later, usually when the lilac bushes are in bloom. The young a year reside in the Delaware River through the summer and fall months prior to immigrating to the Atlantic Ocean. You can usually see these uh, in the late summer as uh, the popping on the surface of the water. The main run follows a south to north pattern, arriving in the lower Delaware River at Trenton within the first few weeks of April, and then proceeds farther upriver uh, as time goes by. So by eastern area, they arrive in late April to early May, in the Delaware water gap to Port Jervis reaches, uh, typically the main runs there around mid-May. And then by the Lackawaxen River and further upriver, it's the mid to end June is when the bulk of the, of the run arrives. Both wade and boat fishing are popular activities to get at these fish. However, be aware as shad move into a pool, they tend to follow the leader. And so it becomes an exercise of trying to find the pathway that the shad are using to get across the riff and into that pool. Uh, please be patient. It does take time because even being a few feet off can be the difference between success. 
Within the Delaware River, American Shad is open to year-round fishing with no minimum size and a three-fish daily creel. Shad darts or a flutter spoon are popular choices. Bring plenty of them because shad hook themselves when they strike and they do so hard. Casting or flatlining are common techniques to find the pathway. And the state record was recorded in 1986 as a 9-pound, nine 9-ounce nine fish. A coastwide stock assessment was just completed last year. The findings from this indicated within the Delaware River the population abundance was unknown and natural mortality is unsustainable. Presently, the Delaware Fish and Wildlife Management Cooperative is revising the Sustainable Fisheries Management Plan. More information on the management of American Shad can be found on the web link at the bottom of this slide. American eel is the final migratory fish of focus for this presentation. Adults are resident in freshwater reaches, returning to the Sargasso Sea for spawning, with the young then immigrating during the summer as glass or elvers. Eels are well distributed throughout the Delaware River Basin as they are able to negotiate most barriers. American eel are typically a nighttime fishery as they emerge from the bottom substrate for feeding. Regulations are open year-round fishing with a 9-inch minimum size and a 25-fish daily creel limit. Techniques for fishing for eels are similar to those used for catfish. You're going to want oily cut bait or use some minnows as a live bait. And they have a very light touch on the bait, so you're going to be want to watch the end of your rod uh, for, a, for a light, a very light movement. Small hooks with long shanks are also needed to match their small mouth. In American eels, there's excellent fishing opportunities throughout the Delaware River main stem any time of the year, as well as in the tributaries. A coastwide stock assessment is ongoing with the initial data collection occurring this past December 2020. The Fish and Boat Commission provided our annual monitoring data and remains an active participant in the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission stock assessment evaluation. For more information concerning the American EO management can be found at the web link at the bottom of this slide. I would like to briefly discuss the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission's restoration activities by our anadromous unit for American Shad within Pennsylvania. Our goal is to generate a self-sustaining wild spawning run in, of adults into the Lehigh and Schuylkill Rivers in the Delaware River Basin and also have a self-sustaining run into the Susquehanna River Basin. Our Van Dyke Shad Hatchery rear and mark fry, which are then released into these waters annually. Returning adults are then sampled for possession of these hatchery marks. Cumulatively over the years, a substantial number of shad fry have been stocked into both, uh, both basins. We have successfully demonstrated mark fry returning as adults, yet successful restoration has substantial challenges unrestricted passage into their historic ranges continues to be problematic. Without unimpeded access to historic spawning nursery grounds, improving the shad population will be hindered. Sources of mortality are another significant consideration. American shad are forage fish, upon which many other popular game fishes eat. As their predators flourish, increased pressure is put upon the American shad for its continued sustainability. Maintenance stockings of American shad will continue the limited shad runs into the Lehigh and Schuylkill Rivers and Susquehanna River Basin, but we will be unable to restore shad until these issues are addressed. I would like to thank you for your attention and interest in the migratory fishes of Pennsylvania. Please submit questions in written form to the panel as previously instructed. Thank you. Bye.